Okay, so I want to start off by defining what a key signature is, just to be very clear about it, because there's a lot of terminology and all of this builds on top of each other. So a key signature is essentially a set of notes um, that you are quote unquote allowed to play uh, when you are in a certain key. So if you're in the key of C, for example, in the key of C, there are no sharps or flats. So if you're looking at a piano, uh, you're gonna start on uh, C, and there are no sharps or flats in the entire scale, so. That's what that means. And you can play any of those notes in the key of C at any time, and it will be technically correct. And those are your chords. So when we're talking about the notes uh, in the key of C, you have C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Those are called scale degrees. So your first scale degree is your first, first note. They also call that the tonic. It's called your root note as well. And in the key of C, it's C, of course. Your second scale degree is gonna be D. Third is E. Fourth is F. Fifth is G. Sixth is A. Seventh is B. And your octave, your uh, root note again is C. So. When I do this on the guitar, I like to play my major scale three notes per string, and I'll show you why. Your root note, if we're staying in the key of C, is going to be eight on the low E string. So we're going to go. We're going to call this a major shape across one string. So, whole step, whole step. So I'm playing 8, 10, 12. You're going to do that same pattern on the A string. So. And then the reason that I like to play the major scale three notes per string on the guitar is because after every two strings you move up a, a fret on your starting note for that string and you change shapes so it's this major shape on the e and a then you move up a fret and you're going to play this shape it's eight ten twelve eight ten now we're going to go down a string, up a fret, we're going to go 8, 10, 12, 8, 10, 12, then starting on D, we're going to go 9, 10, 12, on G, 9, 10, 12, 9, 10, 12, 8, 10, 12, 8, 10, 12, 8, 10, 12. 9, 10, 12, 9, 10, 12. And then we're gonna go to the next string and go up a fret. And we're gonna play 10, 12, 13. And then on the high E, 10, 12, 13. So 8, 10, 12, 8, 10, 12, 9, 10, 12, 9, 10, 12, 10, 12, 13, 10, 12, 13. So. And that is your major scale, three notes per string. Those principles apply across every key. So, if you play that same pattern, the same shapes, starting on the fifth fret, that's gonna be A major, so. As far as the notes go on the neck, if you know what notes are in the scale, so if we're in C major, 
it's C, D, E, F, G, A, B. So you can just count as you play and you'll know what notes those are. If we go back to C major, you're gonna play C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. If you wanna play two octaves of that scale, you just continue the pattern. That's all there is to it. That's the major scale. So for right now, the last thing we're gonna talk about in this lesson is the pattern of whole steps and half steps in the major scale. First, let me define what a whole step is. A whole step is where between two notes, there is a note in between. So for example, between C and D, there's this black key, C sharp. So from C to D is a whole step because there's a note in between. A half step is where there is not a note in between. So for example, B to C. That's a half step. So for your major scale, the pattern of whole steps and half steps between each scale degree is whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. So whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. So the reason that that's important is because that pattern translates across all keys. So if you're in D major, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. And that's the key of D major. So once you understand the distance between each scale degree, you can figure out the major scale in any key. Then from there, you can start building chords off of those scale degrees. And we'll go over that in the next lesson. So the reason that it's a little difficult to go from piano to guitar and have the same understanding why guitar theory is a little bit um, more complicated than theory on a piano is because you can play the same note in you know two different spots on on a guitar so for example e here is the same as e here where on the piano that e it's the same spot there's nowhere else to play it so it makes it a little more straightforward to learn these things on a piano but if you'll notice um when we do that three note per string uh, pattern, you could just go, it's the same thing, but for convenience and for uh, playability's sake, you would want to play it. You could actually play it a third way, which is there's so many different ways to play it. I recommend sticking to the three note per string uh, method because it makes everything a little bit easier to grasp in the long run. Um, and you get more notes that way too. Uh, okay, I'm gonna end this lesson. If you have any questions, please let me know.